Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Rupa and today we're gonna to be talking about screen time and your kid's vision. So if that interests you, stick around. I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified pediatric ophthalmologist, and today we're going to be talking about the effect of all of that distance learning and Zoom sessions and everything on the development of your kid's vision. Specifically, two big articles came out talking about nearsightedness or myopia in kids. And today I'm going to be joined by a very special guest. But before we get to my guest, just FYI, on this channel, we talk a little bit about eye health, eye makeup health, and then my specialty training, which is pediatric ophthalmology, kids' eyes, and strabismus, which is misaligned eyes. So if any of that interests you, please hit the like, follow, subscribe, do all of that so I can keep producing content for you. I've got a little special guest down here. Hey, Mom, what's up? So some of you remember my daughter, Aria, and she is going to help talk about kids and screen time. Let me get you a chair. I'm going to tell you guys about kids and screen. So basically... Oh, are you, t are you taking over here? Yeah. Oh, okay. wait. <laughs> what is that? How about, how about I scoot you over a little bit there, little kids miss? Kids and... So if you guys have any questions, comment down below. Like... My assistant here is going to ask me a question. Wait, I'm your assistant? I thought you were my assistant. Oh, okay. Go on. Okay, all right then. All right, all right, do you want to tell them some of the things before we get into the studies and what they found about actually specifically the pandemic and distance learning and kids' vision? You want to talk about some of the things that we have been doing with screen time? Oh, yes, okay, so... I don't know if my mom mentioned this, but here is something. There is called a 20 20 oh, yeah. rule. When every 20 minutes you blink for 20 seconds in a 20 distance away, and then it's it's it just helps for your eyes, you know, get rid of like the. How about I hold the iPad? Okay, go ahead. You want to talk about the 2020-20 rule? We have obviously not discussed in advance what she's going to say, but let's see. Okay, well, um, the 2020 rule is basically you feet something like 20 distance away, right? Feet, feet something? What do you mean? Six feet away from... No, no, 20 feet. 20, 20 feet right. away from your distance for 20 seconds. And you, have, you do that every 20 minutes. Good. So every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break where you look at something 20 feet away. Also, there's something you can get nearsighted. Uh, if you're too close to the iPad, here, let me see. You want to demonstrate? Okay. If you're like this close to the <laughs> iPad, then you're probably going to get nearsighted. Okay, so that is something we're going to be talking about is near work and how an extended period of near work, whether on a device or just reading and writing, is linked to nearsightedness. Okay, but tell us, tell everybody how many hours, you know, what's the recommendation for how many hours? Well, I usually do two. Very good, yes. But if your guys' mom and dad just say you can only do one, then, yeah, usually my mom and dad usually let me do 30 or 2 hours or 1 hour or 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 45 minutes or something like that. But we never do it for like 800. 800. No, I don't hours. let you do 800 minutes. And this is because you're 7 years old, so you are allowed to have some screen time. Oh, 800 hours. Yeah, I don't let you do 800 hours either. And then what's another important thing to do? Clean. <laughs> yes, I do make you clean. But that's not related to nearsightedness. <laughs> okay, what else do I make you do? <laughs> I make you go... On a walk. Outside, right? Outside yeah. Outside for two hours a day. So, this is... So, this is how we roll. Okay. We go outside, we get some energy up, 
so we have some outside time. We go outside to get some energy. We go outside to get some energy. Thank you. Toodles. All right, so to get you started, some just general recommendations for children's eyes and their visions to keep them safe. But let's get dive deep into the two studies that were published earlier this year. And they really gave us a lot of information about kids and screen time. And here's the thing, it's not just screen time. It's any up close work, so any near work. But as I tell the parents of my patients, Unfortunately, most of my pediatric patients are not on a, you know, they're not reading for 10 hours a day. They're not writing in their journal 10 hours a day, but sometimes they can be on their phones or devices for 10 hours a day. So that's why we tend to talk about it as screen time, but it's not specifically a screen versus anything else up close. Reading, writing is the same in terms of the link and correlation with nearsightedness. All right, so let's look at the studies. So there was a study that came out in January of 2021 in one of our big journals, it was uh, JAMA Ophthalmology, and it looked at a population-based surveys of kids, and they examined kids using a photo screener. Photo screener is just a device that a lot of pediatricians have, and some pediatric ophthalmologists, I do have one in my office, but it's kind of a very easy way to get a sense if a child is nearsighted, farsighted, or, or has astigmatism. You don't need to read the eye chart. And the photo screener that they used in this particular study is the spot photo screener. It's a really good device, and I've seen very accurate results coming out of it. So what they found is that kids who were eight years old had a 1.4 times increase in prevalence of myopia during the pandemic. And it was even higher for kids who were six years old. So they looked at the one year, you know, 2020, and compared it to the five years previous. And what they found was in kids ages six, the incidence of nearsightedness of myopia increased three times. So much more significant than in the older age group. So why is that? Basically, they rationalized that older kids, 9, 10, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, they may already have a device at home that they're on. They might already be having an increase in screen time, which was irrespective of being quarantined. So most, you know, 12 or 13 year olds actually do have their own phone or some kind of device tablet, computer, whatever it is. But kids ages six to eight, most of them are not on a screen for school. They don't have their own phones. They don't have their own tablets. So distance learning during the quarantine period really was a marked difference for those younger kids than it was for the older kids. So that's a trend that we saw. So it means that kids like my daughter, Arya, who's seven, we have to be a lot, lot, lot more cognizant of how much screen time they're getting. And again, it's not screen time per se, it's anything up close, but they really looked at their nearsightedness and you know, because kids were on devices so much during distance learning, this was the inevitable fact. The study also argues that less time spent outdoors probably caused a lot of these children to become nearsighted as well. I've talked about this several times. There's so many studies which have shown about two hours a day of outdoor time is protective against nearsightedness. So that's why it's really kind of one of the rules in our house to get outdoor as much as possible. And I'm lucky, I live in Hawaii, so I know that that's not possible for every single person. But if you can, that really is a protective effect. And when we had distance learning and quarantines, you know, there was no outdoor, you know, activities, there was no PE, there were no school sports, there was no, you know, co-curriculars. None of that was occurring for the last year. And thankfully, a lot of those things have started to come back again. But that is one of the downsides of children spending less time outdoors as well and more time spent on screens. Now, a second study actually looked at kids ages 3 to 18 from the years 1987 to, let me see, 2017. And it analyzed eight surveys. And again, this was a Taiwanese study as well. So what it did was it just looked at all of the data that they had on these children for a very long period of time. The difference between this study and the previous one is they actually did what's called a cycloplegic refraction. That's what I do in my office when a kid comes in 
and I want to check them for glasses. I put the dilating drops in the eyes. I use my instrument so that I can check to see what type of prescription. It's the most accurate way to check for a glasses prescription in a child. It's the gold standard. So it is better than a photo screener. So that's one thing that you just need to know that it's better. And of course, they found that the prevalence of myopia has been increasing over the last 20 years. No surprise here because kids are spending more time doing a lot more up close work, whether it's studying or on devices than they did 20 years prior. And the magic number in this study was 180 minutes or three hours. Kids that spent less than 180 minutes a day on mirror work had much less nearsightedness than kids who spent more than 180 minutes a day. Now, of course, we all came out of distance learning. My kids were on a device for eight hours a day, computer, iPads, everything for their distance learning. So that's obviously a lot more time. Hopefully those effects can now just get washed out if we just bolster with a lot of outdoor time. But it is something to be just thinking about when your child has you know, free time to try to limit the amount of time that they are on screens or devices or even just up close work. You really wanna get them outside at least two hours a day so you can have that protective beneficial effect. This same study also found that in younger kids, the increase in nearsightedness was five times as high as compared to the older kids. So all, everybody increased, but the younger kids are just more susceptible. Two things to note, as I mentioned, this study was done in Taiwan and Taiwan has a crazy amount of nearsightedness, something like 90% of high school juniors in Taiwan are nearsighted. So it's a very different population than where you might be coming from. Second, they used a really strict definition of myopia or nearsightedness. They used a definition of minus 0.25. Now in my office, that's like barely nearsighted. I mean, you wouldn't give glasses for that kind of myopia. So it's a really strict definition. So they might've been catching a lot of kids and calling them nearsighted, even though, you know, I wouldn't really even call them nearsighted in my office, but they did in the study and technically they are myopic. So that's something to also be aware of. And the bottom line is in terms of nearsightedness and myopia, I'm not particularly concerned about how thick a child's glasses are. That doesn't really make any difference to me. What's most concerning is if kids get to that level of minus 5.50 or minus 6.00, that's called high myopia. And high myopia carries with it an increased risk of vision threatening eye conditions later in life. So there's increased risk of cataracts, of glaucoma, myopic maculopathy, retinal tears and retinal detachments. Those are all things that can potentially lead to blindness. So that's why we have to be concerned and just be aware of all of the types of risk factors that can influence and cause our children to become more nearsighted, even more so than they may otherwise be. Because if we can halt this progression, then we can hopefully prevent future vision threatening consequences for them when they are adults. And that's really the goal. So there is absolutely no parent shaming here. You guys know I am not about that. There are many times when my children have the iPad babysitter and it is a fact of life, but if you can just know these studies exist and they have shown correlations and what is you know, the future for your kids, then you can make some small changes in your house that feel right for you and that are workable for you. And that's really ultimately the goal because it's been a very trying year for everybody. We're all doing the best we can as parents. And I just want you guys to have all the information that you need so that you can make the educated choices for your children. So thanks so much for watching everyone. And I hope you enjoyed. Hope you subscribe to our video. Comment down below if you love this video. And make sure you get this shirt I made. Bye. <laughs> Bye.